Blog Talk Radio. Are you ready to take a bite out of the competition? Are you looking for ideas to make your business better? Welcome to the Core Business Show with Tim G.K. Sponsored by Apple Capital Group. At the core of every successful business, you'll find people making a difference. And with each episode of the Core Business Show, we talk with those people, examine those ideas, and explore the strategies that make them special. Now, the host of the Core Business Show, Tim G.K. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Core Business Show. I'm Tim J.K., your host. Today, we have a recording artist. His name is Woodson, and we're going to have him on in a few moments. And we're going to talk about his really his career, his music, his life, and how he got started. So, again, if you want to chime in, go ahead and send a question in the chat room. I'll go ahead and read it out on the air. Also, you feel free to call in at 347-324-3460. Again, we're talking to Woodson. Recording artist, singer, actor, producer. Woodson, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. I guess to begin with, our listeners like to hear personal stories and versus reading the bio. So if you can take the time to kind of tell us how you got started, something about you. Uh, okay. Well, everything actually filming-wise and all that stuff, I started, it all started with me having to, uh, I used to live in the Mystic Project in Somerville, Massachusetts, and they mm-hmm. had a program to keep kids off drugs and stuff like that from the Boys and Girls Club. And I'm sorry, it wasn't the Boys and Girls Club. It was SCAT, like the Channel 3 stations all around the U.S. And then mm-hmm. I really got into it. It went really well. We, My first short film got like, a, I was about, I think, 12 at the time, maybe 12 or 13. It mm-hmm. got national recognition. I won the hometown festival out of L.A. And I did wow. another one the following year, did the same thing. And when you're young, you want to play the sports with your friends. And what happened was I moved, but I kind of fell away from all the film and all that stuff. And the music, my best friend, whom I actually shot the videos about, he was a musician. He was a, uh, He's one of those guys really talented as far as any instrument. He could play any instrument. As long as you hear it, he mm-hmm. could do it. Uh, he was the reason why I guess I got into the music because he was. I was always around him, the music. And it just, it, it's him being doing it all the time intrigued me to want to do it. And I just decided to be a vocalist, and it's been working out for me so far. Wow. So during that particular program, did you have any idea that you were going to actually grow a career in music and acting <laughs> no. in your youthful days? <laughs> no, honestly, no, back in those days, no. It was more so like something, because we didn't have the money to go out and about do certain things. So it was just more like, I guess you want to say, not a waste of time, but back then I didn't take it serious. It was more like, us running around with a camera filming because we never, those things were expensive back then anyway. And we got to do so. We just like, and we, it was, at first, we didn't, I didn't like it, but I grew to like it. And I'm like, it was the best thing that ever happened to me. So, so I mean, when you, so these things happen when you're, you were still a teenager? Yeah. I was about 12. The first award I won, I think, was the Hometown Festival was at 12, 12 or 13. And we did, we did another one at 14. I think the first one was called. I'm the man, and the second one was called Above the Crate Rim. Yeah, and then I stopped, and then after college, well, d- during my mid-college days, that's when I started singing. And, wow, so tell us about your particular style when it comes to music. Style, it varies, because I, today I could be in the mood to sing a pop song, tomorrow I could be in the mood to sing R&B, could be Zook. I, I do it all. I, I pretty I try to be versatile as possible because of the feelings, the emotions that I want to put out there. So uh, it could be any. There's not really a set a set style that I have that I can say, "Oh, this is where I'm at," because I'm all over the place with it. Except I haven't done rock, <laughs> but I do oh, okay. everything. As country far, western? Mostly. No, I haven't done country western yet. No, but you know, all due times and saying what I can, I, I'm okay there. I'm sorry. Yeah, in due time, because I mean, that was kind of ironic. Lionel Richie, he went back to country roots. Yeah, it's, but that sound is honestly really, it's a really good sound. It's like, and now most of the, I think most of the music coming out right now has got that little, that influence in it a little bit more. Like, as far as like Gavin DeGraw, I'm really, right now, he's, that sound I think right now is captivating to me anyway. And I like, that's one mm-hmm. of the reasons I'm, my single is actually going that route. So how do you, the music come to you? It just comes to you in the middle of the night or during the daytime? or How do you complete that thought in writing? It all 
It all depends. Sometimes when I hear the music, most of the time when I hear the music, I'm able to write about a situation because the music kind of leads me where I want to go. And sometimes I already have an idea in my head of what I want to say about a past relationship or whatever the situation I'm going through at that moment, I write about. And sometimes it's, I don't really get, um, I don't get music in my sleep or anything like that. That's more so movies. I, I got ideas of movies in my sleep sometimes or just like running around and doing something and something pops in my head. It's most of the movies that come out that way. But as far as music, it's mostly the music that kind of leads about where I want to go. So who did you listen to growing up? Growing up, I listened to a lot of, let's see, Drew Hill, Boys to Men, Brian McKnight, Prince, <laughs> Mike, and everybody does Michael. <laughs> let me see here. Donnell Jones, and Lionel Richie. There's so many. I, my, like, who is it? Oh, my. There's so many people. I can't think of the top of my head, really. I listen to everybody because I want to see what they all have a unique sound to bring in. And I was really, and back then I was really into R&B. I'm a lover. R&B guys are all lovers. So I was really stuck into the R&B ways. Wow. So with your film background, does that really help you kind of put a visual effect? So as you write the song, you think mentally, visually, how it's going to look in the video? To be honest, I haven't yet. I The, the videos we have, except for, actually, except for her. I think it was the only one we actually constructed something along the lines where we got to follow. But most of the videos that I've done, I have actually tried to stir away from the movie because I want to show a different different side. And I'm trying to actually grow, I guess you want to say, from uh, to show two different sides because I feel as though, like my music, like I haven't really set and done a direct, directing of actual music video to what I can do. It's always been more so, okay, let's just go in there and shoot a couple of scenes, just doing this and that. It's never been set and we follow through, unlike like the trailers and whatnot. No, I've done it with a short film. I haven't, so I can't really say that. Yes, I have. Until now, we're actually working on a new music video called uh, A E I O U. So that was gonna be actually the first storyline, I guess you want to say, or it, I'm sorry, the second storyline compared to her, because hers the actual one. We did take time, we wrote a storyboard and all that stuff, and we did all that. Okay. Let's take a break and listen to one of your tracks. She's hot. I'm going to go and play this one, and then we'll come back. Tell us how you got the thought behind it and how did you write it. So if you don't mind, give us an introduction about this particular track here, She's Hot. She's Hot it was actually, I wrote that one after seeing Lucy, Lu, I'm sorry, Lou Lang beat Wolverine because I, I was intrigued by her. She looked good to me. So <laughs> when I got home after watching x I kind of, I, I had what do you call it? Itchy fingers to write something. Let me just kind of seeing certain things. It's easy for me to write about certain things that I like. So seeing her made me want to write it, and it just came about, and that's how I wrote it. And I got the mm-hmm. my old friend, the Mighty Mystic, to jump on there and do this stuff. And it was one of those. It was a unique record because it was actually based on a movie that I've seen. I've seen a female that could be Wolverine. Not too many females could do that. Period. And she looked good doing it. So I was, I was, I was definitely excited about that. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and just dive into the song. She's hot. Okay, that's She's Hot by Woodson. How did you get to come up with that hook? Did it just <laughs> come to you? Say, okay, I got something, and now I'm going to just work with it. Yeah. I mean, if you see Lou Lang, you see exactly what I'm talking about. I mean, she looks really good. I mean, I, <laughs> she got me that there. I mean, she looks hot. I mean, that's, it, it, to me, it was simple. I mean, she looked good. So she, it just, I, this word just came out. So, yeah. Wow. So is it usually events or something you see that inspires you and say, I have to get something, I have to write this? Yes, indeed. That's how I like to keep it because cause if I'm just forcing myself to write sometimes, it's not what I'm trying to say doesn't really come, like, come out. So to me, I best write if I hear the music or if I see something that intrigues me, then I can write about it. But if, if I force myself to write something, it doesn't usually come out. That's why I don't I don't force myself to write. Let, the music's there, and I'm listening. I, and I'm a very fast writer, so it doesn't take that long. If I hear something that I like, it's going to come within the next 10 minutes. If I don't, it's going to take maybe a day or two. It all depends oh, okay, so that's pretty to, quick. Yeah, yeah that's always really, really quick. Okay. Typically, what is a typical day for you? Because you, you're running your own enterprise. You're running your own business. You're marketing yourself, you're running a website, you're running this and that. How do you manage all of these pieces today? Honestly, I have a really good manager. 
Kim K. Jones, she's really, she's really, there's so many things going on, and she, without her, I'd be, I'd be lost. And she's been able to kind of set certain stones for me where I could do this and that and not trip over myself. The industry so, is so wide, and I haven't even touched not even 5% of the industry yet. So I'm just still trying to, I'm still trying to, trying to figure out a way to balance it still. But with her, she, she takes on certain responsibilities, and I do also because one person can't do everything. You know, it's impossible. And I have a really good uh, supporting cast as far as the movie-wise. I have uh, my partner, uh, Busy Boy, who's my producer. He's always in more, everything that I do, he's always in it. So he takes some responsibilities. And my director, Ken, he's always in there. So, I mean, I got a good people, a good cast and team around me to help me, you know what I'm saying, control everything. I mean, that's basically key, having a foundation where everything can run smoothly. I mean, but not everything ever runs smoothly. <laughs> There's got to be bumps and all that stuff. But we managed pretty good so far on handling what we got so far ahead of us. Okay. So basically, you have a business manager. She normally just book your engagement. How do you manage the other pieces? Do you have a other, publicist um, that does the PR? Oh, yes. Yes, I have a publicist. His name is uh, uh, Josh Mitchell, Wikipedia, the publicity. They do everything. Them together is really my manager and Josh are like heaven sent <laughs> with everything going on. They put everything out right and everything comes out natural and smooth and they handle everything with precision everything they just the best team out of that so how it is it because now you, you're trusting your life and your whole career with two people one is for a business and one is publicity how do you go about picking a person to run your career one for publicity one for managing you who's trying um, to get all your booking all that is actually based on uh, what uh, like one has got to be if you have that for me anyway if you have that if you i guess it's uh, if you could if you got that feeling for that person as far as like, okay, do they give you a, a good vibe or a bad vibe? And both have been able to give me great vibes. And two is their past work, what they've done. And to me, I see myself being able to grow with them and them grow with me. So it's a hand-in-hand type of situation where we all can grow together to, to a better place. Wow. So usually they just get a manager. Can you tell us what a manager does? Manager runs a career. She's like, a manager is a person that is supposed to be counseling you through your career and he's being able to do bookings does uh, contracting they pretty much uh, do everything <laughs> for you and that's why it's so it's that's why it's so important to have somebody that you trust and uh, somebody that knows your vision okay so that's that they go to, with your engagements with you or they just negotiate everything and make all their arrangements for you and all of a sudden if you need to go on a sh- a uh, venue that make sure that you have your tickets and everything lined out on uh, an itinerary for you. Hey, this is where the boom, and then you just go from there and do the event. Then they get compensated. Then it kind of walks about how that whole process works when they for a business manager in that gets you a particular engagement. Oh, it pretty much most people do deal direct with her with the manager just because a lot of people try to screw the artist and the manager there to protect you. And she does all the arrange. She does the arrangement with the companies or the people that wants to book you, and flights, tickets, everything, hotel, and all that stuff has it arranged. And then pretty much it calls you and lets you know, okay, this day, uh, this what you're doing, this what you gotta do, and this how many songs they want you to do, or this what they want you to, you know, what I'm saying what they want you to say. Then you just follow through what she has planned out, and you usually want to stick to what they say because they know best. They've been in that situation before, or they have a pretty good idea or they've spoken to the person about what's supposed to happen. You want to keep close attention to what your manager says because others will try to change things around. Any scary things that from other people that, or even your situation that you ran into without a manager or situations that your manager intervened for you, but things didn't turn out right. You got on the phone with the manager and they kind of solved the issue for you at a particular venue. Anything that stands out? Not per se at a venue, but the only thing I did recall was, I do recall is a lot of people claim that, oh, they can do this and that, speaking to the artist, but she usually steps in and then she weeds out the non-real from the real person. She's been in the industry so long that she knows who is really telling, saying what, me, who really means what they say and say what they mean. Okay, I follow. Any particular horror stories from, I think, some friends of yours 
who say, hey, these are the type of issues you're going to have facing. Anything that stands out from that? We try to get an idea for a person who's trying to wing it on their own without a manager, what issues they can be running in. They don't get paid. I know one of my friends, he's in the Army now, but when he used to sing, we used to be in a group together. He says that he, he was doing everything on his own at one point, but he went to, I think it was, I'm not sure if it was New York, but he showed up. But if they already had made a deal, and he wasn't, he, it was just him and a friend. They really did not have a set plan on what to do. Okay, pick this up. Okay, this lot's supposed to stay and none of that stuff. They just never got in touch with uh, the, the person that booked them. So when they got to the place, they went and did the show, but they didn't think ahead of time where the manager, if he had a manager, she would have picked up at least half the money or half the money or even the money itself for them to go and perform. Because what will happen most of the time, if they don't, if you don't have those type of things set up beforehand, you'll perform and you won't be able to find the booking agent, the person that booked you for that night, and he's gone. And uh, you there? Those are some. Okay. Yes, I'm right here. Yeah. So that's one of the hard. But whoever makes the arrangements necessarily is going to be there for the venue, so you can turn mm-hmm. something positive to something horrible at the very end. I'm sorry. Say that again. Something that was positive can turn to something horrible at towards the end. Yes. Indeed. Indeed. Okay. When it comes to a publicist itself, what do publicists normally do for a person? A publicist is the one that actually gets you publicized. It gets you the people as far as uh, getting you a magazine, getting you aware of radio. They they can pretty much, they bring awareness to you. Because that's one of the main thing out is, is to get noticed, get noticed, 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 I can't say the word right now. Get people to know of you, and that's what the publicity is there to do. Get people to know of you and want you to be around, so therefore be a brand in the world. Okay. We're going to play another track of yours real quick and be back. That one is Let Me Be? Yes, Let Me Be. Okay, tell us about this track. This track was a, it's something that started off from a past relationship. I mean, everybody's gone through a past relationship where they felt as though, like, they, not that they messed up, but, like, they weren't given the full chance. You know what I mean? Like, I've been in a relationship where you feel like you weren't given the chance to make things right. It, was, it happened so fast that you felt neglected, I guess, in a way. Or And I just wanted to just kind of say my piece in that song. Like, I know I'm the right guy, so let me be the one to the female. And that was pretty much it. And that's how Let Me Be came about. <laughs> okay, great. We're going to go ahead and play this track and be back in a moment. Okay, we're back with the Woodson. What's what you like to leave us? What do you see yourself in the next five years? In the next five years, I see myself doing more movies. I feel as though movies, doing movies is like going to be the toughest. It's going to be the toughest thing to do. So I like to give myself a challenge. So I definitely see myself doing more films, especially, I still do music, but I wish to be on a different plateau where I'm doing a lot better and more noticeability and being ahead in life as far as in the music and film industry. Wow. What do you see yourself in the next 100 years from now? What would you like to be remembered as, as an artist? The next years? Well, I guess if you come back 100 years from now, how do you like to be remembered as an artist? No boundaries. That's what it's like. <laughs> there's no boundaries. I had no, there's, especially when you feel restricted. I, I just can't. I'm not the type of person to be restricted. And I want to be able to say, like people say about it, like, he went everywhere. He did everything that he set out to do and what he can do, he did it and more. Wow. And also, to close out, any last comments you'd like to share with the listeners and kind of give us your website address as well? Oh, well, we have, uh, we're have working on a new single actually right now called uh, Let Me, I'm sorry, uh, it's called Killing Me and Whatever. Mm-hmm. We're working on those two singles to come out soon. And we have, both of them are going to be featured actually Sexy Beat, the same guy who was on Let Me Be, he's also going to be on it. And we also, there's more to come. I have three, I think, I'm sorry, two films, short films that I'm working on and a TV series that I'm trying to finish to put out there that will be out. I'm hoping everything will be done by the end of the year to, to push out. We're just taking our time. Plus, I have my book that I finished already, just trying to find the guidelines to to put it out there because it's a, I, had, I did the book because I can, I, not that I can never, but I know my way of shooting this movie wouldn't be right compared to like the same guy who did a Lord of the Rings. So I wrote the story and said, and hopefully <laughs> tried to, to those 
they get corporations to see if they could do it. And that's pretty much it. I mean, my website is www.woodsonmusic.com. You can check me out on Twitter uh, at I am Woodson, and Facebook is Woodson Michelle. Okay, well, thank you for coming on to the program to tell us about yourself and sharing your story and your music. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Great. And your website, again, is witsonmusic.com, and also you're on Twitter and Facebook, of course. Yes, Witsom Michelle, yes. Okay, great. Well, have a great day. I really appreciate you coming on the program. Thank you. I appreciate you for having me. Okay, take care. Again, it's another production of the Core Business Show. You can download this episode on iTunes on Blog Talk Radio. Everybody have a great day. Thank you for listening. Take care. Thank you for listening to The Core Business Show with Tim Jacquet. For more information about equipment financing and asset-based loans, visit our website, applecapitalgroup.com. That's applecapitalgroup.com. Or call us at 866-611-7457. We hope you'll join us for our next episode. And remember, you can always get to The Core via iTunes. You'll find all our previous episodes there. And thanks again for listening to The Core Business Show with Tim Jacquet.